All right, what's happening, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Glad to be here. Hope you're glad to be here. It's good to see everybody. What's going on? Ali Mustafa, Candy, Joyce, Matias, Jeremy, Trisha, JSA Drawing. What's happening, everybody? What's going on? Everybody here? Am I live? Are we good? Are we good? All right. Well, here's the uh, reference photo. Kim, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in. Here's the reference photo, folks. Uh, little sheep. Um, what's going on, JSA Drawing? Thanks for tuning in. Glad everyone's here. What's going on, Vegan Demon? What's happening? Cool name. I like that. Give me one second here. Let's see if I can. There we go. Amanda, what's going on? Matias, <laughs> Brandon had a little lamb. Yeah, I do. I also have a little kitty named Kitty. So let's try to let's get the proportions down. I don't want to make this too big, honestly, because I'll be sitting here all day drawing this thing. I don't want to do that. So we'll make this the height. Let's try to figure out the width here. We'll just kind of guesstimate first. We'll do the body. So it looks like the body comes down to here. I know it's very light right now, but that's okay. Don't worry. We're gonna. I'm gonna get into the pen and ink pretty shortly here. Just kind of want to plan out some of the drawing first. Quickly, simply. Enrique, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in. Gloria, hello. I hope it's going to be cool. I'm hoping. Um, so I'm just trying to plan out. Like I said, just simply plan out some of the shapes we're starting off with here. It's hard to really see this leg. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But I'll try to just draw it the way I'm seeing it. Um, and back here we have... <laughs> you want me to do a flip, sketchbook flip through? I mean, you guys have... I mean, you've seen pretty much all of them in this sketchbook. I mean, this sketchbook is almost done. I have like... Probably in two to three weeks, this thing will be done. So only a few more pages. Uh, so I need to actually, I need to order a new sketchbook here soon. Keep forgetting to do that thing. But, um, can't tell which leg is in front. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I think I can see it now. So it looks like this leg is in front and then this one is behind. Back here. Something like that. Something like that anyway. What's going on, Paul? Thanks for tuning in. First timer. New at Drawing 2. Awesome pen and ink series. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of live streams now from this whole year of doing pen and ink. Just been trying to be consistent, have some fun. You know, I only tried pen and ink this year, so I don't really know a whole lot about it or different techniques and stuff. You know, it's just something I'm just intuitively doing and just just enjoying myself, you know. Just having fun. That's all it's about for me. Nothing too serious. Trying to get the head in the right place here.
<laughs> this is also ASMR. Yeah, a lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. Sometimes I forget to say something or, or just be quiet for a while because I'm just focusing on a certain thing, trying to get it correct, but it just depends. I wish my computer fan wasn't so loud. It always does that when I'm live streaming. I need a new, I need a new laptop, but uh, hopefully one day I can invest in that a little bit here in the future. But for now, this is what I have to work with. So here I am. It's me. What's going on, Josh? Thanks for tuning in. Glad to see you new around here. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks, Anna. I appreciate that. I would love to come to Wales and see the sheep. So I'm just trying to, I'm just planning out like where some of the dark darkness is. I'm looking at my sheep now. I'm seeing that some of the shape's a little off, a little weird. It looks a little skinny. Um, so I may have to make it a little thicker here. Maybe a little maybe thicker up at the top. We'll see how this changes it a bit. Um, see if maybe that looks more. Might be too much. But we'll try it. We'll try it. You know, it's just kind of guesstimating here. Also, the head down here, I think, needs to come up a bit. Just a bit more bulk to it there. You know, I'm just I'm, I'm focusing on small changes now. You know, small kind of changes. You know, I'm trying to see where things line up. Like, okay, the stomach here is actually above the head. Mm -hmm, a bit lower. You know, I just want to get as best I can. Um, it's not going to be perfect, of course. So it looks like this part is the same as this. That's pretty close, actually. So that's actually pretty good height. That's pretty good height to this, you know, this kind of width. It's pretty similar. Let's see how this lines up. Okay, looks like we may have made a mistake here. Nope, nope, we didn't, okay. Yeah, I think the proportions are actually pretty close now. Um, actually. Um, Cubs win. How's it going? Glad to see you back. Freddy, what's happening? Sheep are cool. Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Um, They're pretty cool. Sheep are pretty chill, you know what I mean? I'm pretty chill, sheep are, sheep are pretty chill, so we're just gonna chill out and draw a sheep here, see what we can do with this. You know, lighting's pretty interesting. It's not like sunlight or anything, so there's a little, I'll have some little highlight on the top here, I think. And maybe as it goes down, we'll make it a little less highlighty, and then there's some dark, really, really dark darks under here. So. We'll try to see what we can do here as far as uh, shading and shadowing and stuff like that. Um, I thought it'd be a little, maybe a little challenging. We'll see, possibly, but I think I'm pretty, I think I'm happy with this. I could probably move into the pen and ink now. Um, you know, this one, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much, you know, there's gonna be a shadow under here, obviously, to ground this thing. And I'm gonna draw some, some short grass, you know, we'll draw some short clumps of grass and stuff in the ink when I get to that, just to give it a little bit of environment. But I think I'm pretty happy with this.
How often do you stream, Schaefer? Uh, I try to stream Monday through Friday if I can. Sometimes I got to take a week off or take a few days off or take one day off, you know, it just depends. But if you go to your subscriptions, you'll see like I already have this whole week scheduled out. So, um, so that's what I try to do. And I always do it at the same time every day, five, five, ten Pacific standard time. Um, so that's kind of my schedule. Uh, Vegan Demon says, how often, uh, blah, blah, blah. I always have a problem with proportion. It usually zoom in. I usually zoom in and I make the drawing way too big. What should I do? Well, you should kind of do what I did. So uh, if, you, if you have a problem with your drawing too, too big, uh, then you need to plan, you need to draw a box on your paper that is the proportions of the thing you wanna draw. So what I did with this one in particular, I drew a line for the bottom where the, absolute bottom of it is going to be and then I guesstimated a line for the top so however big you make this like if I would have made made it much bigger then the width would have grown with it as well see what I'm saying so the smaller you make the height the width also decreases in proportion kind of like that see what I'm saying so if you want something to be smaller you need to figure out the longest side, you know, I could have figured out the width first and then I knew the height would have been smaller than the width. So try to map it out on your page first, you know, like try to draw. So if you have something long, like try to draw the width first and then like, okay, where's the bottom? I'll put the bottom here. Now all you have to figure out is in proportion, how tall is that thing? Is it very tall or is it this tall, this tall? And then you can kind of start blocking it in once you've get the proportions. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. You know, just try to keep it simple, but to define the outer limits of your drawing first, um, so that you don't make it too big. So I hope that makes sense. Let's get into the pen part now. Um, yeah, no problem, vegan demon. Tips for staying motivated to make art after an eight hour work day. That's, that's a, that I, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. You know, I, I've been lucky enough this whole year. I haven't really worked. I've worked from home a lot, so I didn't really have to work a solid eight hour day. You know, it's different. Even if I work eight hours a day at home, it's just different than being in an office or having to drive to work and drive home. And, you know, it's just a different feeling. I know that way better for me personally I feel way better working at home I feel more productive I feel happier uh, the office environment just kills me it, it it's so inefficient everybody is so distracted there's all this nonsense going on you know that just the temperature alone in the office makes me I have to bundle up every time I go in the office I freeze it's just it, it yeah anyway it's really annoying for me, so I understand your frustration. But I, I did used to make art when I would come home. I think you just have to, unfortunately, the way to think about it, or one way to think about it is try to treat it like a job, you know what I mean? Just realize that like, you know what? You gotta just sit down or stand up, however you make art, and just do it for an hour. You know what I mean? Just. Thanks, uh, Designs by CAD Pro. Appreciate that. It's coming along. You know, we just started with the ink here. So we'll see how it ends up looking. But yeah, try to treat it like a job and just, or just try to, you know, put a timer on for half an hour and just clear your mind, put on some music, relaxing. Like try to relax after your work day first. And, um, you know, try to relax after your work day, unwind, and then when you feel like you feel good enough to do it, just put on a timer for like 30 minutes or however long, 20 minutes, start out with something and just make that your time to create. You know what I mean? Whatever you need to do, put on certain kind of music, relax, something that's gonna motivate you, watch some motivating videos, Whatever you need, you know, just do that thing, you know. You got to find the inspiration, the motivation. 
And what eventually what you want to do is like, you want to not have to rely on that motivation because motivation goes in and out. You know, there's been times with these streams this year that I didn't really feel like I wanted to stream. I didn't really feel motivated. I didn't feel great, but I came on here and I just did it anyway. And sometimes the drawings came out better. Sometimes they came out worse. doesn't matter. I showed up, I did the work, I did the drawing, I put in the practice. And I think that's just something you got to think about it that way. I hope that helps. You know, I hope, you know, just, just try to simplify it, you know, just keep, just realize your work day is over. Try to relax, unwind, whatever you need to do, take a bath, take a shower, eat some food, feel better, calm down, and then be like, okay, I'm going to put on a timer. And the reason I say put on a timer is because you, you, a lot of people, especially myself, when you have to do something for like a half an hour, an hour, you're like, oh my God, it's going to take an hour. Like it feels so like it's going to take up my whole night or my whole day or whatever. But when you actually just put on a timer and schedule it like that, you realize you have so much more time in your night and in your evening. And once you sit down and do it like these live streams, when I just sit down and do them for an hour, hour and a half, I feel so much better because I'm, I'm like, man, I did, I did something. I feel productive. And now I'm free for the rest of my night to create more, focus on other stuff, or just relax. You know, I, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. But anyway, somebody had a question up there. Uh, Vasanth Kumar says, "Can we do a portrait for a week?" Um, yeah. Okay, we could we could probably do that. Like, do another portrait week. I know it's been. A, it's been a few months since I've done that, so we could probably try that again. Have another portrait week. Try to go a little more in depth than I did last time. I'll keep that in mind for near future. We could probably do some of that, probably. <laughs> the dark spot on the sheep's face looks pretty metal yeah I agree actually <laughs> where did my beard go uh, it's still there I just I just trimmed it up did I have a good oh I don't know if you're asking me or not but uh, did you have a good weekend I did just in case anybody was wondering but um yeah, I don't really remember it. Uh, not because I did anything crazy, but I just don't actually, I don't know what I did. I think I just relaxed, had some, just enjoyed myself and worked on a few things. And what about everybody else? Everybody else doing well? Okay, we'll try to, let me just zoom this in for you guys. Sorry about that. I got a little sidetracked there. I was answering all these questions and forgot to be the camera operator. So I'm gonna try to fill in some of these dark areas first. We'll try to get, get some form going here. So I'm just kind of loosely drawing an outline for these darks. I'm not gonna put them in super dark yet, just we'll put one 
range of value down first just to start There we go. I do probably end up doing a slight transition tone here between the darkest shadows and then the going upward. Thanks, uh, Tomcat. I appreciate that. Really, really appreciate it. Start adding more texture here as it goes on for the fur and everything. But I'm gonna keep going here. We'll just keep going with some of this, these darks. What's going on, Gina? Thanks for tuning in. I would love that this guy would do more animal studies. They are so good. Uh, I've done, a, that's all I draw is animal studies. I've got like 30 or 40 other videos on these. So go check out my channel. I got like a lot of animal studies I've already done. And all the folks here can vouch for me on that one. But yeah, I'm going to keep doing them. So I appreciate you tuning in. Glad you like them. I will keep keep going. I love doing them too. I think they're a lot of fun. Most of them look pretty good. For the most part. You know, some of them are learning process. Some of them, it's like, eh, they didn't really come out the best. Either the lighting wasn't that great or the way I shaded it wasn't that good. You know, it's always, you know, there's always something to learn from them. But, yeah. You know. Thanks, uh, CAD Pro. I appreciate that. He says, your pen work is good now. I just started with pen work. Not as good. Yeah, pen, pen is difficult, you know, because you only get one shot at it. You know, you have to, like, you have to really... You have to be very mindful of the marks that you're putting down and where you're putting them. Because once it goes down, you can't really change it. But I love using the tone paper too. The tone paper just, it's been a game changer for me in my drawings. I, I, I really don't ever think I'll go back to white paper. You know, maybe I will eventually, but I don't really want to. You know, I love the, the tone paper. It's just uh, being able to use that white ink and stuff, it's just so much more fun for me and I, I love the look of it I love everything about it so
<laughs> yeah, I think the same thing to uh, Cubs win. Sometimes I think we're part of a private two-way conversation on here. Yeah. Well, it happens. Wow. Thanks, uh, Roland Amaro. Thanks for the uh, $20 donation. They say, uh, not much, but I love your videos and voice. Thanks. I appreciate that. Really, really appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to use that to get get another sketchbook so we can keep these drawings and stuff going, man. Really appreciate that. Cool. I'm going to go order that tonight. I'm going to get a, a gray one. This is a toned tan. It doesn't look very tan, but it is in real life, actually. But I'm going to get a gray one so we can have a little different different look you know I've done two almost two sketchbooks one and a half or something of this tan but yeah thank you thank you so much for the um, donation do you remember where this picture was taken um I didn't take this photo actually I found it online it's from a uh, stock photo place called unsplash where you can use photos commercially with no attribution. So uh, I particularly didn't take this photo, unfortunately. Sometimes I do draw animals and stuff that I've taken photos of, but um, there are, I do have a few photos that I actually haven't drawn yet that I took or that were from a trip that I was on. But uh, just haven't gotten around to doing those yet. But. We'll do them eventually, you know, just take my time and so let's see. I know this is going to look stupid right now, but I'm just going to put it in and uh, it'll look it'll look different once I put all the grass in and stuff, but I'm just putting a shadow value underneath this thing, but it is going to ground it a little bit, you know, it's already looks, you know, grounded, but once I put more natural clumps of grass and stuff on top of it, it's going to start, it'll just look like a darker part of the grass. <clears throat> yeah, unsplash.com, that's a good, that's a good site. They have a lot of high quality photos on there. Some of them, some of them, they have too many like photos that are overcast. I wish there was more that had like nice strong light. It's kind of hard to find sometimes, but I understand why photographers, they don't want that harsh, strong light sometimes. But for me, it makes a really great drawing or great painting when I have that really harsh light, you know, clear separation of shadow and light. I wish more photographers would put out photos like that. See now as I'm clumping this more together, you know, I can kind of, we can fade some of this out too, some of these shadows. I'll put some white grass in here too, as well, in a little while, but for now, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't even know if I should add white to this. I mean, maybe I should, it is pretty bright up here, but it's not, 
light, you know, it's not, there's not sunlight in this scene, but, you know, I guess it just needs a little bit of highlights up here. Let me get rid of some of these pencil marks. It's a little distracting for me. But I think it's looking pretty good so far. Um, yeah, hopefully this white ink will be okay. I feel like it might be too harsh for this one, but I'm, I'm gonna go for it anyway. Because um, why not? How can I improve in drawing? Oh, just practice, learn more and practice, apply concepts. I got something coming in a little while, so uh, when I'm ready to talk about that, I'll have more to say, but I've got something I'm working on, folks. Um, so just stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty good, very helpful for a lot of folks. Maybe just test all black for today. Well, too late now, Matthias. I'm doing white already, so. There must be a little delay on the video there. Because <laughs> uh, I'm going in. All right, CAD Pro, take it easy. Can we use 200 uh, GSM watercolor paper for graphite and charcoal drawing? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely you could. Um, yeah, I've, I've thought about doing that myself. I've seen other people do that. I think it's, yep, I would, I would give that a shot. Are you painting a Christmas card? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really, uh, I haven't really planned. I haven't really planned or thought about doing that. Um, but maybe, maybe. What would be a good thing to paint for a Christmas card? Obviously, some kind of snowy scene. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I mean, I do have like a snowy tree forest scene already. It's a square though, so I don't know if it would really work for a Christmas card that well. So I'm just trying to like show different texture of this, of the hair here, or the fur or whatever this stuff's called. The wool, the stuff. The good stuff. A decorated door. Yeah. I'm going to be painting some more doorways. A doorway I sold the other day, or the paint, <laughs> the, the doorway I painted the other day I already sold. So. People like the doorway ones. I don't know why, but I think it's they're very symbolic. You know, something with there's something about doorways that are, you know, symbolic. So I'm gonna try to fade this down a little bit. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna put less light as it comes down. So like more spacing, more spacing between each stroke, and less of it. And it's just going to show that it's kind of, it's turning. So just a little bit of light as it goes down. 
but as we go up, more and more, more and more as we go up, less as we go down. I'll probably have to do darken this up and then like fade up the darkness as well. Yeah, marketing is tough. Marketing is, is very tough. No doubt. I'm learning marketing myself right now, so it's uh it's not easy. It's definitely not an easy thing. Especially to market your yourself. It's uh it's tough to figure out how to do it for your own work and your own business and own stuff, you know. Something I've struggled with for years and years and years. What's up, Philip? Doorways symbolize hope. Well, look at you with the coming with the the deep meanings today that's true that's true you know it's it, you're right you're right walking through a doorway into something new something bigger something better you know another chapter in your life I mean there's a lot of you're right there's a lot to read into a doorway or even just a door that's closed or like part of one door open or something it's like you know, there's there's so much there's so much thought you could put into that. You know, people can make up their own minds of what it means to them. Even like a clo like I was saying, even like closed doors. I mean, it's like hmm, it's a, it's mysterious. Like, what's on the other side of those doors? You know, what is it? What it makes you think? I guess more than other stuff sometimes. Well, this is different. This is looking pretty different, you know. I haven't really done something that looks like this textured before, you know. I've always struggled with texture and I don't know, I'm kind of just like winging it right now. I wish I could have come up with a sheep pun instead of a bird pun. You know, winging it. There's no wings on a sheep. What could I say? Just kind of sheeping it right now, you know. Just shearing it right now. <laughs> I don't know. One door opens, another closes. Yep, that's good. You could try maybe a spiral staircase. That's pretty cool. That's a cool idea. That'd be challenging with all those angles and turning and all kinds of stuff. Like that would be, that sounds pretty annoying. <laughs> but no, it's a good challenge. It's a good idea actually. You know, every weekend I always try to like, I spend a little time, I just randomly look at photos and try to see if there's anything interesting that I come across. So, yeah, I'll add that one to my list to kind of search. Oh, so now that I'm looking at the legs, they definitely look brighter than its body. So I feel like I need to add like a little bit of white down here. I don't want to add too much though, cause they're not, they're not that bright, you know? So I think I just need to be careful with how I do this. You know, something like that, just a little bit of something there. Even if it's just broken lines. Sorry folks, I should have been zoomed in on this. I'm just doing little marks here, little hair type of marks. Even though sheep, it's not really like that, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit different, but I'm just trying to make it when, you know, you look far away, it looks, looks pretty good. But up close kind of looks stupid, you know, a bunch of worms or something. 
Am I Jewish? No, not that I know of. Actually, my ancestry said I was like like one percent or something Jewish, like very, very, very little. I don't even know if it was one percent. It might have been like point eight or something. I don't even know. Can't remember. But I'm German though. French and German and Irish and all that kind of stuff. Mostly Western European in that way, Northwestern. But actually I'm from America, so. But my ancestors, my Schaefer ancestor came over to America in 1851. So it's pretty cool to know that, pretty interesting. I learned that like a year or two ago through some ancestry records. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, missing your plain air painting. Yeah, I have one episode I need to. Sorry, folks, I've been doing the head here. <laughs> Forgot to move. Yeah, I got one episode I need to edit. Um, I just have a lot going on right now. I haven't had time to edit it, but yeah, I haven't done any plein air painting in a while. I've been I've been missing it too. Trust me, I've been missing it too. But glad glad you guys, somebody out there likes it, likes seeing those episodes. So I'll definitely try to get back into that soon when I can. Maybe more on the weekends. I need to start doing that. I just don't feel inspired where I'm at. You know, I don't have any, I have no motivation to go out where I'm at. I need to, I need to go somewhere else. I need to find something else. All right, so let's do a little bit more here. I'm gonna switch to the black pen soon, I think, cause I'm doing a lot of white. Might be overdoing it, so. There we go. Looks pretty good, pretty solid. Actually, let's do some white grass in here, actually, now that I remember. It'll just try to give a little bit of light in here. Even though it's not direct sunlight, but it's just reflected light. We can kind of show that there's shadow and light going on. Kind of give a little more depth, kind of overlap the animal a bit here. Do some marks. But see, looks more realistic now. And I think once I add like more of the darks and stuff, I think we'll be pretty good. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Where do I live? I live uh, in America. I live in California, that's where I live. Um, I do not speak French. <laughs> have you tried drawing? Uh, oh, I remember you, yeah, I have that on my list, uh, SFS Eagle. Axolotl or something. I don't know how to say that, but I have it on my list. And I, I was I looked I looked up photos and stuff of them. They look pretty cool. I'm gonna I'll do that one very soon, pro hopefully. I'll try to find a photo of that one. They look pretty interesting, <laughs> pretty different, very different. That's for sure. But I do do have that on my list. Thanks, Gina. I appreciate it. Uh, what's going on? Cool, cool dip. Cool, three, two, two. What's happening? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in California, and yes, California costs a lot. I agree. I don't want to be here forever. That's for sure.
So I'm gonna start fading some of this up a little bit as well. So we're just, we're just trying to darken the shadow a little bit more. Let's see what that will look like. And also we can see it's a bit darker right around the edge of the shadow. So I'll just add a little bit of value there. We'll just darken it toward the edge so that we get more roundness to it, more form, as you guys can see, just kind of rounding that a bit more. Instead of it being so abrupt, you know, we don't want an abrupt change. We want it to fade. You know, when you think of light on a spherical object, you know, it's like a, there's a transition between light to dark. It's not like light and then dark, sharp line. It just doesn't happen like that. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here, that conceptual kind of idea of it turning, this thing kind of turning three-dimensionally. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, let me, uh, before I get too far into this, be, guys, be sure to like, share, subscribe, also comment. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Greatly appreciate that. Any support on the channel, definitely appreciated. And uh, be sure to check out my website, shaferfineart.com. I got drawings like the one you see here and some uh, watercolor painting as well, all for sale. Um, it's all on my website. I also have a support page where you can donate to me, PayPal, Venmo. I have a thread list with t-shirts and stuff and a Patreon page. And I also have a band camp where I make instrumentals for my YouTube channel and just stuff I make on my own time. Um, just check that all out at my website, shaferfineart.com. And uh, greatly appreciate the $20 donation from earlier from Roland. Greatly appreciate that very, very much. And anybody else who has supported the channel over the years and supported what I do, thank you very much. And for all the people that are here all the time, chatting on the videos and everything, guys are greatly appreciated as well. Very happy to have you guys here and to tune in. We have 105 people currently. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Glad to see everybody back. And any new folks here, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you have a good evening, good day, wherever you are. And I'm just drawing a sheep today. We're just sheeping it up, you know what I mean? Sheep and stuff up. So, always challenging myself. You know, trying to do some new kinds of texture and stuff. Never really done anything like this before, so it's very interesting. You know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a big fan of what's going on up here, but I tried. You know, it kind of looks like some kind of bath mat or something, some kind of rug. <laughs> But hey, I mean, it, they do use their wool for stuff like that. So I guess you could say it's not too bad. Um, just trying to add a little bit more texture here. More shadowing. All throughout here, and here, and we'll try to darken some of the grass underneath as well, and we'll also overlap some of the white strokes that we did that I did earlier, so that it just gives a little more depth. And you don't want all the the white ones to be in front. You know, you do want some dark to be in front as well. Trying to make some random kind of markings and stuff. I'm 
but I think I'm pretty uh, I think I'm pretty close here. I feel pretty good about this one actually. Surprisingly, I was a little worried, especially when I had the proportions off in the beginning. I was a little worried it was gonna be a, more challenging than this, but I'm actually happy with how this is coming out. It's very rare for that to happen for me. <laughs> I feel like. But it feels good. Feels good. I can thicken up some of these line, the line work maybe, in certain areas. Right here on the neck, that's a good little action line there on the neck. So anyway, what do you guys think of this one? I think it came out pretty well. Thanks, Henrique. I appreciate that. He says another great drawing, Brandon. Thanks, I appreciate that. What paint am I using? I'm using this Pigma Micron. And uh, once this video uploads, I'm gonna do a pinned comment with all the materials that I used today. Um, the white pins, black pins, sketchbook, paper, everything. I'll have pinned comments. And there's a comment, there's a link right there um, in the chat to the uh, to the uh, pin. Yeah, thanks guys for helping me out. Everybody kind of answered. Uh, the drawing looks good actually. Thanks, I appreciate that, Essie. Greatly appreciated. Um, What's going on, Peaches? Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I don't know what kind of sheep this is, to be honest. I'm not like a sheep. I'm not a sheep wrangler or anything. You know, I don't really know, but I'm not a sheep expert. But it looks, looks like a cool sheep to me. Is there anything else I can add to it? I don't know. I hmm. What could I? Is there anything that does it need anything else? I guess is the real question, right? Not what else could I add to it, but does it need anything? Maybe just a few more white strokes here. Can't have enough of those, right? <laughs> you can actually. I just I just like them a lot. Okay. Um, I just feel it needed a little more balance, a little more balance. Okay, I feel pretty good. I feel good about this one, folks. Imagine that, how long have we been on? 55 minutes, look at that, we did this one in 55 minutes. So imagine that, or 54 minutes. <laughs> sheep wrangler yeah exactly wow so this was a quick one this was a quick one folks um yeah i don't know what to say i mean jsa drawing did want me to flip through a sketchbook so i mean i don't know what sketchbook you guys want to see um well okay sfs eagle asked a question uh they say you've probably gotten this many times but how do you get the proportions correct every time it amazes me well, uh, I don't actually. I don't get the proportions correct every time. Um, this last drawing that I did, uh, I didn't get the proportions correct on this one actually. If you, I don't know if, if anybody was here when you saw this one, I actually did not get the proportions correct. Um, Mancy, why are you uh, angry? What's going on? You gotta calm down, you gotta chill out. 
Um, uh, so, um, yeah, this one, the, the elk was actually turning, was turned more towards us. Like, I'll try to demonstrate. So let's say this is like profile view of an elk. My drawing is more like this, like coming towards us a little bit. But the, the photo is actually more like this. Like it was turned much more towards us. So I kind of got the body too long. But when you see the drawing by itself, it doesn't look too bad, you know? Um, so that's the thing. You can, always, you can always prepare it. What's going on, Mancy? Thanks for tuning in. But um, you can always, that, that's the thing, like the drawing by itself, it looks good, it looks anatomically correct, it looks okay. Maybe this leg looks a little weird, looks a little funny, because it's kind of coming straight at us almost. Um, you know, it looks a little stiff. But other than that, the proportions don't look that off, even though compared to the photograph, they really were. So I think it's just an illusion, you know? Like this looks like a sheep, it's not perfect. You know, if I were to lay the photograph over it, There'd be some differences, obviously, you know, maybe this is bigger or smaller, or, you know, but it's just one of those things, like it just looks. Um, yeah, but I always see all the mistakes I make. You guys want me, want me to flip through this, the sketchbook I've already done? I'll show you guys some of this. I've done this before, but since we got a lot of people here, I guess, maybe some of you guys are new, so. I'll just show you the kinds of things that I've done in the past, if you guys want to see. Although this one, yeah, there's not a whole lot of good ones in this sketchbook, actually. My other sketchbook has a lot of much better stuff. Um, Let's do my other one real quick. This one's a bit older, so there's just some old stuff in here. Some of you guys may have seen. So this is like graphite when I was still doing graphite. Um, haven't done graphite in a while. It's just, it's much messier in the sketchbook. You can't get as much contrast. I don't know, I just like, I find myself going to pen and ink more and more nowadays. But, um, yeah, it's true, Matias. Sometimes, you know, just, I get weird proportions. But, yeah, this is just stuff I've done in the past few years ago. Um, some notes I took about nature and trees. Why do I like what? What? Why do I like trees so much? What is it about trees? And you know, it's just some notes I took there. A lot of thumbnails I was doing for landscapes. You know, I think I've shown you guys this stuff before, but just random crappy drawings. <laughs> but um, uh, this was a study of a painting. Yeah, here's a charcoal I did. See, it's so messy. I just touched it just a little bit and it's already... That's why I like pen and ink. You know, it's just... You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, but that's also another... That's a study of a painting as well. This is drawn from life. This is my neighbor's plant sitting on their little balcony there. And... Uh, little study of a, of a clay, uh, not a clay, of a, uh, what do they call that? I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, just a little study of something from life. These are uh, painting studies of a Bouguereau. This is a Bouguereau study. This is a Sar John Singer Sargent study. Um, here's me trying to get the proportions correct. So this is me like messing up the proportions and then redrawing it again. Um, so you can see how difficult that kind of proportion is for a portrait. Um, this is me, portrait stuff drawn from life on this, uh, on this tool here. I'll show you guys real quick on the webcam. So, so this tool here, that's the eye that you guys see. Put that back. So yeah, that's just me drawing different different angles, different lighting scenarios. And I did a lot of that head thing before. I've drawn a lot, little studies of that, larger studies, really subtle lighting. 
other little studies of a portrait from paintings. Um, I mean, I don't mind using graphite. I just, I really prefer the pen and ink now because I just like the kind of shading you can get with it. And you don't have to worry about it smudging or smearing in your sketchbook, you know. And you don't have to worry about spraying it with some kind of spray to keep it there. But that's one of my favorite ones that I did. It's probably one of my best ones of that head thing. This is me experimenting with charcoal, different kinds of charcoal. Another crazy page, just experimenting. Head thing again. This is where I started getting into animal drawing. That's probably one of my best ones too, actually. Um, and that's me rendering it more realistically rather than, you know, I didn't really get far on that one, but. Uh, have you been offered a job by an animation studio brand? No, I have not. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think I would get offered a job like that. This is when I got into drawing animal studies. This is, these are rabbits, uh, snow, it's called a snowshoe hare from uh, Alaska when I was in Denali National Park. So this was um, some photographs and stuff. I drew these from photographs that were taken. So this is when I started drawing animals. You know, I got into, these are all from my Alaska trip. From, these are from like 2018 other kind of birds and stuff. But you could see how if I did these in pen and ink, it'd be so much stronger. Like, so let's remember this one and this one. I've drawn both of these in pen and ink. I'll show you guys if I can find it really quick here. Um, I know for sure I've drawn that bird. Yep, here we go. So see this bird here? There we go. I mean, that looks, this looks so much better to me Obviously, you know, I had a different intention, but just the contrast, I mean, it's way different than, you know, this little bit of graphite that I did. Of course, I could have gone darker with the graphite and stuff like that, but this is more of just a sketch. You know, it's all just sketches, but. But, you know. These are some I haven't done in pen and ink yet. These wolves, these are actually wolves. Um, they were on like some kind of a rescue farm kind of a thing. Where they, uh, it was for, it was like a, I forgot what they called it. It wasn't a rehabilitation place, but it was a place where they take like uh, injured animals and basically they take care of animals that can't go out into the wild anymore. So this is when I started getting into animal drawing, trying to experiment with different markers and, and brush pins and stuff. I might do more of this eventually, use that brush pin again. And then I started just doing like a regular liner pin. So you guys can see a lot of these on my channel, me drawing these. One of my favorite ones there. These are, that's from Alaska as well. Moose that I saw in Alaska from a photograph. One of my favorites, another favorite of mine. How long does it take for one sketch? Like one of these like this, uh, like an hour. You know, I just did one in 55 minutes. I just did one, so, you know. Sometimes, you know, they're not that good. You know, it just depends. Like this one, eh, not that great, but you can see I was experimenting with a different kind of, I was using this big white marker, this white pen. Um, has a bigger tip. So I was just like experimenting with that, seeing what kind of marks I can get, you know. Fade this out a bit more. You know, I was just experimenting, like, not that great, <laughs> as you can see. Once again, that white marker I was using and like, just crazy water reflections and stuff. It's very difficult. Um, you know, I had a, some bad ones here for a while, some bat ones. But, you know, they can't all be great, you know. You just got to try different things, see what works, what doesn't work and just figure things out. This is what I just did. I just started, this was at the beginning of the year. I just started figuring things out, you know, 
Um, trying to figure out what works, what I like, what I don't like. That's my cat. Um, this is probably one of my favorite ones, the seagull. Just the, the way I did the line work here. Thicker here, thinner, thinner, thicker. You know, thicker, th you know. Just the way, it, it just, it came out really well. The way I did the thick and the thin there. I didn't even have to use any white. This whole thing was actually white up here. And I didn't, I decided not to use any white because I just liked how it looked. Um, but yeah. Is there a spray you can use on graphite and charcoal to make it less messy afterwards? Yes, there is, but I don't really want to do that. It's very flammable and stuff. I just, it, it's just a, a pain, you know, I don't even want to bother with that. All the drawings, everything on my website's for sale. Underneath the drawings tab or the watercolor tab, all that's for sale. All these are for sale. Um, sorry if I missed any questions, folks. Just type it again. I know I missed one or two. Uh, let me see if I can scroll back up here. Somebody said, do you ever get unmotivated? I think I saw that somewhere. Yeah, do you ever feel unmotivated? Uh, yeah, I mean, plenty of times, plenty of times. Definitely. That's one of my favorites as well, Grizzly Bear. Definitely feel unmotivated, but you know, you just gotta, if you feel like you need to take a break, just take a break and, and try to get back to it, you know? So that's the end of this sketchbook. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that one. I could show you a few from here. You know, most these are these are ones that I did after that sketchbook I just showed you guys. So these are all more recent. You know, not as good, more sketchy. You can sit tell I'm getting more sketchy. Um, yeah, I had a streak of some that weren't that. You know, these aren't that good. But this one came out really well. I love this one. Just the texture and the shading, and um, yeah, that's one of my favorites as well. Another pretty good one, pretty good. You know, that white really just gives context to everything. Um, do I have any tips for you for, uh, for what? Being, for, unmo for motivation and stuff? Uh, book recommendations. Oh, I can't remember the name of the book. Go look in. Go look in my. Go look at the description of my videos. I have some recommended book links there. Um, for recommended books. I think one of them in the in the description is like a masterful portrait drawing or something. I can't remember the name of it, but that one's really good for drawing. Um, but what I'm showing you guys here, I'm showing you all the sketches, even if they're good or bad. So some advice I can give you is to just keep doing it. You know, even if you have some that are bad, just keep going and keep learning from what you did. You know, some of these are pretty good and then, you know, really good and then not so good. You know, I can see here, I kind of messed up the value. I went light over dark and dark over light, you know, it's something to learn from, you know, you just have to keep drawing, you know, I draw a few times every week on these live streams, you know, and I just, I just stick with it. You know, I think that's, drawing tips, uh, you know, treat it like, treat it like a workout, treat it like you're going to the gym or something, but actually do the workout, you know, just put a timer on for like 30 minutes and just draw every day. Just draw what you're interested in, draw what you like, if you don't know what you like, then just start drawing things and eventually you'll find something that you like to draw. Don't worry about style. Don't even bother with style. Um, I don't even feel like I have a style. Obviously with the way I do grass and stuff, I'm starting to build some kind of style. The more you do stuff over and over and over, you'll, that's how you get a style. You know, I, I don't even feel like I have a style at all. I just sit, I just get on here and I just draw. But part of my style is the way I shade. You know, I do vertical lines most of the time. 
and that's come, becoming part of my style. Like it's one way that I know how to, I can shade. You know, sometimes I follow the form of objects when I feel it's necessary. And other times I don't. Other times I just ignore the, the form and uh, I just go straight down. You know, so it just depends. Sometimes I mix, sometimes I go with the form, and sometimes I go straight down, you know. I like how you use white. Thanks, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, Kylie says, thanks, thanks. Most of live people don't answer questions. Thank you for answering us. Yeah, no problem. I try to. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep up, but... Uh, Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to put it. SFS Eagle, uh, they said graphite is messy and reflects too much light. Ink doesn't reflect as much light. It's also smoother and a lot cleaner. Exactly, you pretty much summed up exactly how I feel about that. See, this one I I, I was a little messy with, you know. Uh, I feel like if I would have just done this shadow doing straight lines or something, you know, it still came out okay, but it was just uh, it was challenging. It was challenging. You know, here's more of the vertical lines again. And then in the light, I used, I followed the form and did texture. So I kind of played around here with two different methods. I don't know if it really was successful, but it's interesting how the shadows are going all straight down. And then the, the light is turning the form and some texture there. And then here's the one from today. I did kind of the same thing. Straight down in the shadows. I kind of make the shadows flat and then give form to the light areas. So it's something I'm playing around with here lately. And, you know, uh, I'm kind of trying to build the style, but I'm not worried about style at all. I'm just letting it naturally happen. My style is the way that I naturally draw. That's my style, you know? So, yeah, there's a lot of things when it comes to style, like uh, subject matter and uh, the way you draw how you shade, the colors you use, if you do paintings, you know, the colors you use, the subject matter, all these things play a, a big part of style, but it's not something I think you should try to chase or anything, you know, it's kind of like, just l let it naturally happen, you know. See you next time, Eagle, SFS Eagle, thanks for tuning in, see you tomorrow. We have a painting tomorrow, we have a watercolor painting, should be good, should be a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, I'll go back to this, uh, Drawing I did today. I don't know why I was putting the sketchbook away, but um, <laughs> part of my style is how I shave. How I shade, shade. Da, da. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, guess I'm gonna get off here. Um. Yeah, I do have some of my uh, children's drawings that I've shown and stuff, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video about those soon, actually. So, um, okay, Paul has a question here before I get off. Um, Paul says, as a beginner, I'm using graphite because I'm afraid of not being able to fix my mistakes with pen. What are your thoughts? I think that's a good way to go. I think that's a good way to go. I think. I think you could start out with graphite, but if, if you feel like you're interested in doing pen and ink, I would just start playing around with it here and there. You know, maybe every, every three drawings you do, do one pen and ink over the graphite. Um, I, I had the same fear when I started pen and ink. I started pen and ink at the beginning of this year. That's literally when I started pen and ink. I've never really used uh, pen and ink. I will not forget the plain air. Uh, don't worry, I won't forget that video. But yeah, I just, I started out this year only doing pen and ink. I've never done pen and ink before that that much at all. And uh, I was afraid of messing up and I messed up a lot. I mean, I've just showed you guys all the drawings that I've done this whole year and they're not all that great. Not all of them are good. Um, I think today's looked pretty well, came out pretty well. But they don't always, it doesn't always happen, so. You can't worry about it too much, but just get more, build up your confidence with the graphite a lot. Just try to do what you can. 
And then maybe like every three or five drawings, try to just do a pen and ink on, on top of the graphite and see what happens. You know, just pr you got to practice. The only way to get good at it is to practice, you know. But um, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And thank you, thank you, Roland, for the $20 donation. Greatly appreciate it, man. Really appreciate that so much. That's a big help for me uh, on this channel. Let me keep keep moving, keep going on, and uh, I'll continue to do what I do. But I'll see you guys tomorrow for a uh, watercolor. I forgot what it even. I forgot what I'm doing, uh, but I guess I'll I'll figure it out later. <laughs> Just go to the subscription page. You guys can see what I'll be doing tomorrow. Be sure to check out my website, shaperfineart.com. Uh, got some drawings, paintings on there. Uh, also, support page, definitely check that out. And uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. As always, um, okay, one last question, one last question. Have you ever used, a different Paul asks, have you ever used watercolor over your pen and ink? Uh, not, I did in the very, very, very past, like 10 years ago, when I just did watercolor for like a year, 10 years ago when I was in college. I did, but I haven't recently. I plan on trying that soon, hopefully. So we can try to do some kind of architectural stuff, kind of maybe some, uh, what do you call it? Um, what do they call it? Urban sketching type of look. We could try to do some of that. So yeah, look forward to trying that out. So anyway, thank you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care of yourself.